Now, the first close-up look at Pluto starts today as New Horizons makes its fly pass. Let's talk to space journalist Sarah Crudders, who's here. Good morning. Good morning. What sort of detail will we get to see? Well, we've never seen Pluto before. This is the, um, it's kind of the, the final um, tick in the classical planets. Of course, Pluto is being downgraded as a planet. And the cameras, the long-range cameras on the New Horizon 2015 mission, are going to be able to see or show us the equivalent of a, a satellite looking at Earth and being able to see ponds in a park. So it really is incredible detail. We're talking about a range of a quarter of a mile when we actually get to the surface of Pluto. So it's going to be the most detailed images we've ever seen of Pluto. So we're actually going to be able for the first time to see what Pluto looks like and to see whether all these rumors are true about rivers of neon and ice of nitrogen and all these huge surprises that we can't even imagine yet. Why does it matter? Why does it matter? Because this is the furthest we can explore with spacecraft, so this is the limit to human exploration. And we used to think Pluto was a planet. It was downgraded a few months after the mission launched in 2006. We now know there's these different types of objects, which are called dwarf planets, which Pluto is one of, and out in this Kuiper Belt region in the distant parts of the solar system. And it matters because we're pushing the boundaries of human exploration. And in the Kuiper Belt, um, just beyond Pluto, we believe that's the relics of what began at the early solar system and why um, you know, hopefully answers as to why our solar system came to be. So it's another piece in the jigsaw puzzle as to our own existence and also just really beginning to uncover the mysteries of our own solar system. There's always been with Pluto a fascination not only with itself as a, as a planet or a dwarf planet but also with its moons and particularly Sharon. Yeah, Will we get a, a closer look at Sharon? Well actually Pluto and Sharon are actually a double dwarf planet system so Sharon's more of the Sharon's very similar to our own moon as well and what we've learned so far the biggest surprise have been number one Pluto is red and number two Sharon is completely different to Pluto so we think Sharon its largest moon currently there are five moons in Pluto though we think there may be up to ten we think it was formed in a similar way to our own moon but we don't know for certain but at the moment there seems to be lots of craters as well so we're going to find more about Sharon but also about Pluto's other moons and then also the possibility of rings around Pluto as well. Would this mission have been launched launched at all if we'd have known in advance that it was just a dwarf planet or is it still of interest and still it's significant? of even more interest because we don't know what it is. I think the problem is in science we tend to categorise things and in space science that doesn't work. I mean it's not just a dwarf planet. This is something which helps to begin to provide the answers about why we exist and this is the limit of human exploration. Only two spacecraft have gone further, Voyager 1 and 2, and they never visited Pluto. They never visited the Kuiper Belt which is this um, rocky almost like asteroid belt you could think of it in layman's terms which is beyond the classical gas planet so this is really just putting together the final piece in the jigsaw puzzle about our own solar system and one of the most exciting things is the ashes of Clyde Tombaugh who actually discovered Pluto they're on board this mission so oh, 85 they? years later oh, he's wow. finally nice. traveling to within 7,800 7, miles of the planet he discovered. Do you know uh, I wasn't oh, really God. interested in this story you <laughs> made me absolutely fascinated. It, it, we, think <laughs> of the <laughs> excitement Rosetta Ball and this is the mm. next step up I mean we've got these robotic spacecraft out there which are just exploring the solar system before humans can and make the most of these types of missions because this the planning for this started in the late 80s there are no missions like this being planned at the moment so certainly within the next 30 years or so we're not going to see something like this a final bit of geekery <laughs> uh, it's it's three billion miles away yeah how long will it take the signal to get back so about four hours so the mission actually arrives at Pluto it's only a two hour flyby after nearly 10 years to get there um, but it's going to get more than a year or nearly a year and a half's worth of data in those two hours so it'll just concentrate on Pluto completely around lunchtime and then it'll take four hours for the signal to come back and then hopefully the first pictures, which is what most people care about, uh, they're going to start to come around during the early hours of tomorrow morning. Wow. Yeah, lot, I'm officially a lot could still go wrong, <laughs> couldn't it? That's a no, it'll be fine. It's all pre-programmed. It'll be fine. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Lovely. Sarah, thank you. Great thank to talk you. to you.